and I met so many people because of Vine. I'm so grateful. I mean, I met my husband pretty much because right. of Vine, if yeah. you think about it, because he used to watch my videos and he was like, oh my God, I always thought you were so funny. He's like, and now I like see you're really hot. <laughs> I'm like, well, I got hot. I got like some fillers and shit. People are like, people think I have like plastic surgery, which I actually didn't get actual surgery. I just got right, like right. some fillers. I got some lip injections okay. and, you know, a little under eye filler. And maybe well, at least you're honest balance. about it. I feel oh like my a God, lot of I'm people... not going to lie about it. Like yeah. it's, I literally, and you know, I only did it because. Oh. Hey guys, it's Brittany Furlong Lee and you're watching me on Living Small. Living Large. <laughs> Living Large. <laughs> Welcome into the podcast, another episode of Living Large. If you guys are watching on YouTube, make sure you guys smash the like button, boom, and drop a comment. And if you guys are listening on a podcast app, rate us five stars. Today's guest is a very special guest. She's probably the funniest girl I've ever met in my life and on the internet. She started her career out on Vine. Now she's been on a Netflix documentary. She was in the Netflix movie, The Dirt. I'm honored to have you on, Brittany. Thanks. Spe- oh my you- God, what an intro. You don't say that to anybody else. What? The funniest girl ever. That's so nice. You are the funniest girl ever. I'm going to start crying. I love how it's called living large. I'm like, what about like living medium? <laughs> I don't know about living no, large. No, we're living LA. We're living large. Really? I've you been, live the largest life right really? now. Really? I've been driving the same car for the past five years. <laughs> it's like a Mercedes, but don't worry about it. But it's like an older one, so it's not that cool. But yeah. You, you, you're so talking. Grateful. You have a Fendi case on your phone. It's not real. It's fake. Really? Yeah, this is. Well, at least you're real about that. If Most you, people I'm in LA so are People are like, cool Fendi case. I'm like, no, F is for furlong. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and definitely definitely not real. And you're not even an L.A. girl. You're a Pennsylvania girl. I know. I'm from, from Phil- Amish country. Philadelphia. Good old Philadelphia. I know. Honestly, like watch out for horse and buggy crossing signs. Are you like, actually? Where I grew up. Yeah. Like there were signs that like had Amish people on them <laughs> with horses and they were like, watch out for these people because I'm from Ohio and crazy there's drivers. like up by Lancaster, PA. Yes, like, yeah, yeah. dude. It's like they are they're living. Speaking of living large, they're, <laughs> they're you living. should get some Amish people on here. <laughs> they're living really large. Oh, my God. <laughs> But like we're gonna teach you how to take horse shit and make an entire house, okay? Like fuck. Is that what they do? They're fucking crazy, dude. They they like I just drive by. They're like churning butter for three days. I'm like, how's that butter? Is it done yet? Like oh fuck. My God. This is what I mean. The reason I love you is because you have zero filter. Yeah, none. Am I allowed to curse on you? You can do whatever you oh, want. Thank fuck. <laughs> I hate when I go on somewhere like someone's podcast and they're like, well, we um we are trying to be, tap into the Nickelodeon audience. <laughs> so could you please not use any cuss words? So then they you- say cuss words they're like please don't do that they don't even say so i'm like gee golly jeepers like you gotta be all weird so what made you move to los angeles in the first place um i have i was really depressed in pennsylvania and felt like i didn't belong there my whole life it's like ohio the weather's kind of shitty i mean the weather wasn't shitty it was just like I don't know. Pennsylvania, I just didn't really have a lot going on. It was just such, such a mundane life. I was like a waitress at Bennigan's. Were you like, a rebellious kid? Oh, yeah. No, I got in trouble all the time. Okay. Yeah, I was very fucked up. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I was like kind of a tomboy because my dad and my brother, um, I was raised with my dad and my brother, so I'm like very tomboyish. And mm-hmm. so um, I've, I've got in trouble a lot because I was always outspoken and all this <laughs> shit. Like people were always like, shut the fuck up. And I was like, you guys want to hear another joke? You guys want another joke? Another joke? Anyone? Another joke? Yeah. Like my, my teachers were like, just shut the fuck. Like they couldn't stand it. So um, so then I was like, I just, I was in theater and doing all that stuff, but then I kind of didn't relate to like the theater nerds cause they were like really big dorks. And I was like, wow, these people are fucking dorks. Like I was like, I want to be an actor, but not like Tim over there yeah. who's got his pants like pulled up over his belly button. He's been rehearsing fucking Hamlet for four days. I'm like, Tim has no friends. Like, damn. He's like, I'm going to be the most successful actor one day. Where's um, Tim now? Nah, fuck. I don't know. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's crazy. So I like, I didn't really relate to the acting kids either, but then like I did theater for so long and I loved it and I was um, a part of all these playhouses and uh, I I was like I want to take it to the next level my parents were kind of like no like they were like no they just right. they didn't really they didn't not LA they, wasn't like a thing for no, Pennsylvania I mean like it wasn't like they didn't support me but they were just like they wanted me to go to school for something else because they didn't really see like me <laughs> having success like becoming <laughs> an actor you know what I mean yeah they were like, you know, we don't have any family in the business and all that stuff. But my stepmom actually is really cool. Um, she, when her and my dad got married, she actually grew up in California and she always like believed in me and was like, no, like let her go to school in California. She'll get the experience and love it. And mm-hmm. I, I could see her fitting in there. And so like, it's really like all from my stepmom, like pushing my dad and being like, had let your, her go to school. Had your parents there. ever been to California? 
We went like twice to like Disney or something. We went to like Disneyland and like I walked up and down the Sunset Strip to like. Right. I went to like the Viper Room because I was like obsessed <laughs> with Johnny Depp when I was in high school <laughs> and I wanted to go there and like I was like, oh my god, maybe he'll be here. Meanwhile, right. he'd sold it like four years ago. <laughs> I was like, oh fuck, has Johnny been in here? They're like, dude, he hasn't been in here in like ten years. Yeah. I'm like, fuck, all right, well, uh, you know, just show me where River Phoenix died and I'm out of here. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it was actually crazy, and so I was like, oh, fuck, I love it. I want to come back and. I ended up moving out here when I was 17 and I went to fashion school just to kind of like where did you go to fit them oh, downtown that, okay. oh I my know god what there. a waste of money did you graduate yeah of course I oh, graduated wow. I got like an associate's degree like well, I don't know what you, but you I don't didn't, know what you can do with that I think you could yeah. be like work at Trader Joe's but or you didn't you didn't uh do theater then no because well I did it on the side because my my parents wanted me to go to school my dad wanted me to go to school for something else because he was like well if you're gonna go out there and pursue acting then at least have a backup plan right so my backup plan was fashion school meanwhile I didn't give a shit I was right. like oh I'm gonna go to the easy college like I got accepted to UCLA but I was like no I want to go to like an easy right, easy right. easy school so I can really focus on the acting so stuff. did you go to like UCB and improv and do I stuff like that I couldn't afford UCB because I was broke it was like four hundred dollars how'd like you afford to live class. out here did you have a job did you have parents help you <laughs> oh my god well basically you have a sugar I, daddy for, fuck no I wish <laughs> I wish I could do that shit I'm like I can't put that shit in my mouth like I, I can't I can't put anything in my mouth that I don't want to put in my mouth let's just put it that way um no I so when I moved out here so when I was in college for the first two years my dad um paid for it mm-hmm. obviously paid for me to be out here right. and I had like school housing so that really helped me for the first two years and then after that he was like well you're on your own now mm-hmm. and I was like oh fuck so I was like I was like really skinny. I was like 90 pounds. And so I went in for like a casting call for a fit modeling job. And fit models are basically like a women who go in and designers um, shape their clothes on them because they're so tiny. Oh, okay. So it's like to make sample sizes and stuff of their garments. And so I went in for a fit modeling job and I booked it. And it was with this like Asian company in downtown LA and it was like $250 an hour. Oh, wow. So it was rad. But yeah. I don't, and I only had to work like two or three hours a day. And it but was, it was consistent? so dope. Yeah, I got like worked like three or four days a week, oh, a wow. week. So I was making money. So I was like, "Fuck, this is awesome." And then I found um, an apartment. I moved into a house in Hollywood with my girlfriends. And then I started doing stand up. I started going to the open mics. Oh, really? Yeah. So I started, which was like, that free though, or did you get paid? Yeah, free. Okay. Obviously, you don't get paid when you're yeah. new. They're yeah. like, "This person sucks." Like, <laughs> Here, I'll, I'll give you. I'll give you something. I'll give you a tip. Yeah. Don't stand up in a canoe. Um, <laughs> So basically I went, um, I went and started doing improv and, or not improv. I started going to the improv and the comedy store and doing their open mics. And I started becoming friends with like all the stand up comics. And that was when literally like Chris D'Elia was starting, right. Adam Devine, Melissa Villasenor, who's on SNL now, like Esther Pavitsky, who has that show alone together. Like I started with all of them and we were all new Gerard, Gerard Carmichael, like all these huge stand ups, and we were all doing open mics and, um, I, I basically like start dating then a stand up who I'm not going to mention, but okay. yeah, he also has his own show. He's cool. We're friends, but I don't want to talk about it. Yeah. Um, so I started dating him and we moved in together and then we would go and do open mics together and, um, I would do better than him Ooh. sometimes like Yikes. Mo- most of the time. So that's why you okay, all up. the time. No. Yeah. So, 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 <laughs> So well, it's hard to work with someone, right. live with like, someone, like so, date someone. So he would he would tell me like, oh, well, the fact that you're there is like throwing me off my game, and you know, I don't. But you would think you being there would make it better. Make it better, but yeah. I think he was like it was like competitive, okay. you know, and so. Um, he was like, well, I, I don't want to date a stand-up, so like, if you keep doing stand-up, I don't want to you know, date you anymore. So I, me being like pathetic and codependent, I was like, oh, fuck it. I'll give up stand-up. Okay. You know, I won't do this anymore. So I stopped going to open mics and doing all that stuff and let him do it. He's very successful now. Um, and so I just started, you know, trying to do improv videos with my friends. So I became friends with like some people that were doing like YouTube sketches and stuff okay, like okay. that and started doing improv comedy. Meanwhile, they did like UCB and all that stuff. And I still couldn't afford it because I actually got fired from the fit modeling job because okay. I had gained some weight. Like you I gained was, like six pounds. I gained like four pounds. Yeah. I was like one, maybe like one ten, and they were like, no, 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 we need you to be like one oh five. Like it wow. was like really fucked up. So I got fired from that. So then. Um, I was just like struggling. I started working at this place called the Edison downtown, uh, waitressing okay. or hosting rather, uh, which was really cool. I feel like cool that's place. the story of like every like person that wants to be an actor. They're like oh, dude, doing waitress every stuff. Every actor has been like a waiter yeah. or like a, a, like a stand in or an extra, right, like right. everyone. I don't care who 
they are yeah. you know and they may, they might not admit it but they've all done it you know right. um i had eli roth recently on my podcast i saw that the he's director. dope he's yeah. amazing he was an extra wow he feel like that's like what he did and he was a pa when he was in, in in college and he he admits it like unabashedly he's like whatever everyone's done it you know and now he's crushing like all and these horror films yeah he's yeah. done a million things you know so um, he was in uh inglorious bastards too yeah he's yeah. like best friends with tarantino yeah that's so insane. yeah so it's crazy um so then then I was waitressing at the or hosting at the Edison and uh, basically making like no money. I had to like steal food sometimes to mm-hmm. like get by, you know, because our rent was like seventeen hundred a month for a one bedroom. And you shared a bedroom. Yeah, well, we were together. Me oh, and, that's me right. You still your boyfriend. At this yeah, point. yeah, okay. yeah. And then um, it was just really hard. And then uh, you know there were some problems. I'm not going to say what they were because I don't want to like whatever. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we ended up breaking up. I started dating a new guy. And I had only had a BlackBerry at that point, and the new guy started dating Randall. Do you remember Randall when yeah, I first of started buying yeah, yeah. Randall? So Randall bought me my first iPhone. He was like, "Oh man, you don't need a BlackBerry. You need yeah, an yeah. iPhone." I was like, "Really?" And he's like, "Blackberries yeah. were sick, though." Dude, I was so into my BlackBerry. <laughs> yeah. I could like type so fast. I was like, hey, "Give me a <laughs> BBM." I, I was like, "BBM." I was yeah, like, yeah. "Fucking to- all over it." Yeah, I loved yeah. it, and I didn't want to move on to the iPhone. I didn't. I was like, "Ew, no, mm-hmm. it doesn't have buttons." Yeah, yeah. I want to push buttons. You right, know what I mean? Right. I was I so remember. like. But then, thank God, Randall got me an iPhone, and then literally, like, three months after he got it for me, Vine came out. Wow. And I was like, ooh, what's this? You know, because I was, you know, struggling, Who obviously. got you into Vine? Okay, Did so Batch I saw- Did Batch into Vine? No, I got Batch into Vine. You got Batch, because you were, like, the top Viner. I was the top Viner at one point. Yeah. It's just so crazy. And so- um, so uh, I started. I saw Vine advertised on Instagram- and I was like, what's this? And I saw I could just go on there and make like short videos. And I was like, this is amazing. So I just started going on there and just, I was uploading like three or four videos a day, just having fun. Just, like selfie mode. Yeah. Just doing whatever I wanted, you mm-hmm. know? And then all these people just slowly started following me. And I was like, whoa, this is crazy. Like my following just kept growing and right. growing and growing. And I was like, whoa, this is insane. And I remember Randall used to get so mad at me. He was like, why are you wasting all your time with that dumb thing? He's like, all you're doing is because he, because he would be like editing another room and I'd be like, shh, I'm binding. And he'd be yeah, like, yeah. What's What's even vining? You know what right. I mean? Like he was mad. Um, and then eventually he saw like all these people were following me and he was like, whoa, it's, actually it's crazy. And then my first brand deal was like with Benefit Cosmetics. How did you get that? And like, what they was that experience like? They just emailed me because my email was in my bio of my Vine. Right, right. And they were like, we want to give you $10,000. And I was like. But did you know you could make money? No, I <laughs> never. I was so new to this whole thing. The whole YouTube yeah, yeah. and Vine. Like I didn't even know what a Vine. I didn't even know what the internet was. I didn't even have an Instagram. Oh, wow. Like I had, or I had an Instagram, but I didn't really like, wasn't active on right, it, you right. know, cause I saw Vine on Instagram, but I wasn't like an active Instagram participant. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I'd post like maybe once a month or something. Right. Yeah, cause it was never, there was no such thing as an influencer yet. No. And yeah. I wasn't really into social media. I was like, what is this shit? Um, I was like into being more private uh-huh. at that point. Obviously now I'm like, you guys want to see my asshole? <laughs> yeah. It's like think, time, whoa, have things changed. Um, <laughs> So it's kind of crazy. So then uh, I started doing all these videos and then Benefit Cosmetics emailed me and they're like, we want to give you $10,000 to do one Vine post because I had like 500,000 followers or something like did that. Did you negotiate or you took it? Did, well, are you kidding me? I was like, I would have done it for like three lip glosses. <laughs> like I couldn't believe that they were like yeah, offering yeah. me this money. And I was like, oh my, I thought it was like a joke or like a prank. And I. So who did you ask about it? No one. Well, you have this a is what happened. I had a. Oh my god! I had a manager. Like right when I started getting really popular on Vine, one of Randall's friends like hooked me up with this manager mm-hmm. and. Oh my God. It was like the worst. She like, wasn't really a manager. She was like in a few Geico commercials or something. And like, she was like, ah, it's like flow from, C- yeah, she was like, I'll teach you how to do your career. Like, no, not yeah, even yeah. As, as successful as flow. Flo was like very <laughs> successful. Like this is someone who's like been in the background of like three commercials. Yeah, yeah. She was like, I'll teach you how to run your career. So she was like my manager, you know, but she really didn't like do anything. She like got me a couple meetings, but nobody like took her right, seriously. Right. So they weren't going to take me seriously. So then like, <clears> um, ICM, CAA, Paradigm, and UTA all emailed me within like one week of me like being like having like 500,000 followers mm-hmm. on Vine. And my first meeting was with ICM. And I almost didn't go to the meeting because I was struggling with such bad anxiety at the time. Like I'd gotten off, I, I take this medication called mm-hmm. Effexor. It's like an anti anxiety medication. Okay. I was on it since I was 16, but I'd gotten myself off of it for an entire year and a half. But I was like struggling. And that's when I started my Vine career when I was okay. off of that was Vine drug. like your 
escape? Well, or? kind of because like I wasn't leaving my house because I would get too anxiety ridden. I'd start shaking and like freak out. I don't know what the fuck's wrong with me. Anyway, <laughs> I'm like, I'm not going to try to figure but it out. But it's so interesting because you're so outgoing and you don't care what other people think of you. So that's I am, really interesting. but I'm also like very scared. Like I have this really weird dichotomy of two personalities like okay. I'm, I'm a very scared person but i'm almost like it's a, it's almost like i'm so scared that i'm like i'm gonna be loud and and talk and uh, you know okay. what i mean like to before you can f- you know form any opinions about me i'm gonna you steal know, the show steal the show yeah, 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 yeah. yeah or distract you Ooh, yeah, yeah. don't form an opinion you know yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm over here being funny um, <laughs> yo guys i interrupt this episode to let you know that this episode is brought to you by vistaprint guys i got a shout out vistaprint they're one of our top sponsors they keep the podcast going and i always tell you guys how important it is to have a business card because if you get someone's phone number you lose their phone number you don't really remember who it is it actually came in super clutch to have my business cards down at coachella this past weekend ran into a lot of entrepreneurs a lot of businessmen and it's just professional to hand over a piece of stock real paper you guys you can upload your design your own design or start with one of the professionally designs pick whatever stock you want style quantity that's right for you choose your delivery speed order and receive your cards in as few as three days three three days guys your satisfaction 100% guaranteed or they'll make it right either by reprinting your order or offering a refund I'm hooking you guys up, guys. Vince the Print wants to you to be able to own the now in any situation, which is why our listeners will get 500 high-quality custom business cards starting at $9.99. Just go to vistaprint.com backslash large. That's vistaprint.com backslash large. Vistaprint.com backslash large. So, yeah, no. Um, so then I w- was off of this medicine, and I was really struggling. Like, I was taking, like, six Benadryl a day just to not have a panic attack. I Isn't Benadryl for allergies? Yeah, Benadryl's for fucking allergies, but it, like, <laughs> makes you tired. Right, right. And I noticed it, like, has, like, a calming effect. So, like, I would take the Benadryl to, like, calm me down, you know, because I didn't want to take Xanax or anything. But it was like, fuck, why are you taking all these <laughs> right, Benadryl? Right. Like, it was just bad. So I almost didn't go to the meeting with ICM because the day that I had the meeting, I was shaking so badly and like throwing up because I didn't want to leave my house. I don't Mm -hmm. know what is wrong with me when I'm not on this medication. I'm too scared to like be around people. But then like once you like push me in the room with them, I'm fine. It's really weird. I can't explain it anyway. So I ended up going to the meeting. I went. I was probably a nervous wreck, but acted like I wasn't. Mm -hmm. And. As I was driving out of the meeting with this, you know, manager in in the car, they called me and they were like, hey, we want to sign you. We want you to come in and we want to work with you. Come back in. We'll sign you. At this point, so you had 500K. Did anybody else have a big following on Vine? No, I was like the biggest. Okay. Um, And well, I mean, like I had like there were big people before me. Had you like, collabed yet? No. Okay. It was like Adam Goldberg and like. Marlo Meekins and like uh, Steve Ag, they all had like big followings, you know, but then I passed all of them. So then I was like the top person. And it was weird because when I started Vine and I looked at their stuff, I was like, well, I'll never be like them. Yeah, yeah. And then I passed them. Um, but then, so then I, uh, <laughs> I ended up going back into ICM, my manager, instead of me taking other meetings was like, just go sign with them. Right, you know, you right. never get this opportunity again. My like guy co-manager. Yeah, I was yeah. like, oh, okay, you're right. And like, I went and signed a two-year contract, oh, gee. which they don't do that. Like talent right. agencies now will just like, it's kind of like a shake your hand. Right, you know what right. I mean? Like you go in, you meet with like UTA or mm-hmm. someone big and they're like, okay, we're going to work together. You don't actually sign on a dotted line right, most right. of the time, right? So they f- may- had me sign on a dotted line that for two years I had to be with them. And, and you couldn't so get out of it? I couldn't get out of it. And oh, then, so for that two years, I like, obviously like it, it didn't really help. Like I was the biggest in my you know, on Vine, like huge and like biggest in that kind of thing. And nothing really happened. Like I didn't get a show. I didn't get anything because like, mm-hmm. the agents I'd signed with were kind of like junior agents. At well, the they, time. D- they signed you and then started taking your fame and money. started taking my yeah. money and not really getting me any opportunities. And it was just kind of a waste, but which is um, kind of, honestly, I hate that that's the model here because even with me, for example, you, you build your following on your own and then all of a sudden an agency comes around and they're like, Hey, well, they smell money. Yeah. They're like little blood sniffing dogs. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Yeah. Is it money? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like they're yeah. like, ah, I want some of that. Can I have some? You know what but I mean? But it sucks because like, then they come and they take, what, 10%? And yeah, it's 10%. Like, and I mean, that kind of adds up. Like when you're making like $20,000, you know, like it's, it's a crazy. lot. And plus it's you have lot. managers taking 10, managers taking lawyer 10, taking 5, lawyer taking 5, the government taking you 50. You have all of that. Yeah, the government <laughs> taking all of it. Yeah. You, you getting one penny. Yeah, exactly. You know I mean? At the end of it, it's like, you make a hundred thousand dollar deal and you get it's like thirty like k of it, yeah. which is like obviously we're complaining. No, I mean I'm not. I'm definitely so grateful. Yeah, yeah. I'm totally not complaining. But I mean, you get fucked, and it's like kind of sad because it's like this weird thing in Hollywood that everyone just wants to be signed to 
a reputable agency to be like, oh, I'm with, you know, UTA, yeah. I'm with CAA, or mm-hmm. I'm with WME, but then, like, what are they doing for you? You know right, what I mean? Right. Like, I'm with WME right now, um, and I'm with, um, I just switched to WME, like, a year ago, and I'm with 360 Management now, so, I mean, you never know. It's we not, all, like, yeah. It's we, like, I feel like it's like Hollywood's changed in a sense where back in the day you could get like discovered right. and like an agent actually right. like an agent makes would, your career. An agent had to find you opportunities because that was the only way that they would make money. So they would find you be like, oh, this person's talented and that they'd plug you in where they could, you know, work you with this director or, or put you in this movie or, you know, whatever, try to get you auditions for things. Right now it's like we come self-sufficient making the money already and then they say if they they see if they can do things right and if they can't they're just like whatever we're still making money so right. it's not like as much of a pressure you know like for you don't agents. have to work as hard the agents they it's not as much of a pressure for them with like social influencers you know with with people like that right. so it's kind of fru- it's kind of frustrating and even with traditional actors i mean for the most part like you know, opportunities are being thrown at people all day. I mean, I get thrown opportunities. I can't even imagine what like Will Smith and like oh, yeah. huge names are getting thrown. It's like, what do agents do? They just they just do the contract and like they just you know. Mm-hmm. I'm sure they bring some opportunities, but for the most part, I think a lot of things just come to people. You know, was when Vine died. Yeah. Was that hard for you, or no, were you already off of so it? I was so happy I was already off of it. Okay. I've been off of it for like six months. But were you were you like worried about where your career was gonna go? I already knew that things like weren't gonna happen. Like, I don't know how to say this. I feel like I've tried so hard for so many years, and I'm not saying obviously like I'm not saying I'm giving up or anything like that. But you know, I've done so many classes. I've I've done so many auditions. I've done some films. I've done like indie films. You know, I did We Are Your Friends. I had like one line in that. I had like one line in the recent Dirt thing. <laughs> the coolest thing I've done so far, I think, is the American Meme right. documentary. That was really cool. Which on, how did you Netflix. land that? Um, actually, a friend of a friend hooked me up with Bert Marcus, the director, and was like, he wants to follow around, um, you know, a few influencers for a year. Oh, Ended wow. up being three years. And, film and you opened you. up in that. Oh my God, so much! Like, I what was that like for you? Why were you willing to do that? Because you're very open. Yeah, like you're talking I'm so about like open. your struggles with anxiety, oh, taking yeah. medications. Oh yeah. Because like, I just don't believe in I don't believe in um, like sheltering that part of yourself. I think that that's so important to let people know like what is really going on. I I think it's unfair when people go on social media or anywhere online and they they act like, "Oh, like my life is just great all the time. Mm-hmm. Here's me drinking a margarita, like here's me like laying by a pool, you know. Right. They're never like, "Here's me in a pit of despair, yeah. like crying <laughs> into my bathtub." Like right. I, I I but we all have those moments. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, "You know what? I don't want to walk around and pretend that my life is a highlight reel when it's not. I right. wanna, if I'm going to share, I'm going to share everything. And people are like, oh, some people are like, oh, it's too much sharing. But for me, like, I'm like, no, because I'm not going to just share the good stuff. I'm going to show you everything. If I'm going to show if I'm going to show you anything, I'm going to show you everything. You know, I feel like so, that's what you've always done, even with Vine. Like always. your content was always edgy. It was yeah. like crossing the line of what people. Oh, my like, God. So bad. And it made me really sad because people would be like, oh, you're racist or whatever. Mm-hmm. And like. The thing that sucks is that like I grew up outside of Philly, so I like I grew up with people of all different ethnicities, mm-hmm. and I never really saw the I never really saw color, and we would all joke around about each other, right? And right. it was like so safe in my group of friends, like we would all make jokes about each other. They'd shit on me, I'd shit on them, right, like right. it was just chill, you know. And I feel then, like you can't do that. And anymore. then when you get into the real world, yeah, yeah. people are like, "Oh, that's fuck." I mean, and yeah, like I see it, like I get it now. Like I will, I look at my old vines, and I'm like, "Oh my god." fuck I didn't realize like how that could offend someone but Mm -hmm. now I I see it and it like bums me out that like (sighs) that I didn't see it then because I just wasn't I wasn't aware of that because because I just been was it was it because were you just naive or did you have an ego like like no one nothing can affect me no I was naive like I definitely would do these videos and like in my brain I was like there's nothing wrong with this because me and all my friends joke around about this stuff you know what I mean and then I realized the world is a lot bigger than just you and your group of friends who who know you as a person and know you don't mean it in a, right. in a harmful way, you know? And so yeah. it was really hard for me to understand when people were calling me like racist and stuff like that. I was like, fuck, I, I don't get where this is coming from. Uh-huh. And, and now, years later, I'm like, 
ooh, like some of the stuff I did, I was like, oof. What like, makes you be able to acknowledge that now, though? Um, I think just now because I have had a longer time in this sort of industry and in mm -hmm. this kind of experience and all the people that I've met and that kind of thing. And it wasn't like I'm just this young person from – you know, Pennsylvania who kind of didn't really experience life outside of her social circle, right. you know, I've met so many other people and, you know, realized the world's a lot bigger than like what your group of friends. Would you thinks. say that that's because you moved to Los Angeles? Because I think that me growing up in Ohio, and I don't know if you could speak to this is like very close minded. Like, yeah, I mean, and I don't know if it's close minded as much as like you have your friends that your safe space is with. And mm -hmm. like you guys joke around about shit and shit's funny to you. And you don't realize that, that stuff is can be offensive to somebody else. And so it's like you kind of, yeah, maybe it's like closed minded, but maybe just like not, not, uh, not cultured enough or not out right. experienced enough. Do you, you feel know? like with your following and in your influence, do you have a responsibility to like, in a sense, not be yourself because like you're, you essentially have to filter yourself. Now, oh, for sure. Right? I mean, well now it's like, I mean, now it's kind of like I have more of a, uh, I don't know, more of a, a, a sensitivity to it because I've, you know, if someone says something like you're racist, it really affects you because you're like, oh my God, that's the last thing I'd ever want right. to be. Like, that's so horrible. And so you kind of like look, you look at things differently now before you say something or before you do a joke instead of like before I would just do it and be like, fuck it. Like, it was funny to me and my friends, you know what I mean? Not care about what the rest of the world thinks. And now I'm kind of like, oh, it's funny to me and my friends, but is this going to be funny to everyone or is this going to hurt someone's feelings or whatever, you know, because I'm, I'm so sensitive. I'm like, I never want to be the person that hurts someone's feelings or makes someone feel bad, you right. know? So, yeah, I mean, it definitely made me be more like cautious. Where would you say way. right now your career is shifting to? Because you just did the documentary mm -hmm. um, and now you're starting a podcast. Yeah. Like what made you Guys, want to start the podcast? Guys, make sure to check out my podcast. It's actually worst really funny. Worst first on iTunes. It's funny. It's about people's worst dates. It's called Worst First, and I'm having. I've had a lot of cool guests on there. What makes you want to do you're that? You're gonna be on there. Yeah. <laughs> um. So I love to talk. Obviously, I don't shut the yeah. fuck up. Um. <laughs> so I basically was like, I don't really see where my life is going right now, and um, I signed with Studio Seventy One, who's awesome, like for digital talent, mm -hmm. and they were like, you know, you should do a podcast, and so they offered me a podcast deal. And I was like, that sounds awesome. And I really need something to kind of get me out of my house because mm -hmm. I'm just spending a lot of time in my <laughs> yeah. in my house just staring at walls and trying <laughs> to figure out what I'm doing with my life. And so it's been really great for me, actually. Have it, you ever had that feeling before? Like what? when you first moved out here? Like, I don't know what I'm doing? Yeah, all the time. I still okay. don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. I think some of the most successful people in life still don't know what right, they're right. doing. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. You never know when your next thing's going to happen or not happen. Right. And so you're constantly sitting there like, fuck. Pardon the interruption again, guys. This episode is also brought to you by Blinkist. I've talked about them several times before, guys, and I just got into reading myself. But the really cool thing about Blinkist, it's, it's an app. You can basically take all the major takeaways from a lot of nonfiction books in less than 15 minutes so you don't have to read the entire one because everyone's got a busy life. You guys got all, all got busy lives. I got a busy life. Eight million people are using Blinkist right now. It has a massive and growing library from self-help, which I've been reading, business, I also read, and history books, whatever you guys want to do, you just... 15 minutes you don't have to read the whole thing uh saves you a lot a lot of time and which i enjoy you know going in the car or whatever it may be if i have 15 minutes walking on the treadmill i really like to educate myself i've talked about this a lot guys i feel like our audience and the reason we're watching podcasts and reading books is we really want to learn more and and just be more intelligent and it's awesome that you can listen to a book in 15 minutes right now for a limited time blinkist has a special offer just for our audience go to blinkist.com large to start your free seven day trial that's blinkist spelled b-l-i-n-k-i-s-t blinkist.com slash large to start your seven day trial blinkist.com slash large what is what am I doing with my life mm -hmm. you know I think about that a lot and people are like oh you're married like you're all set like you don't have to worry about yeah. anything and I'm like uh no dude like I still pay all my own bills right. like the only thing I don't pay is rent which obviously is like a huge mm -hmm. I'm so grateful for that but still like I have to take I have things to take care of right, you know right. health insurance car insurance like you know uh everything there's just right. so much um so yeah like i i mean i i still want to be able and be successful on my own i've never been someone who wants to be taken like care dependent. of yeah because yeah, yeah. it doesn't make me feel good you know because then i feel like i owe that person or, yeah you yeah. know and they can hold it over your head or something or like you know one day they're mad at you and like 
you know, you can't go shopping or <laughs> you're like, yeah, you're but like, I want to go shopping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I try to remain self-sufficient no matter what, I, even though my husband's amazing and he is very supportive and he definitely, you know, takes really good care of me. So I, I'm so grateful for that. It's really How cool. did you guys just recently got married? Congratulations. I see a giant rock yeah, on your hand. He, Holy yeah, shit. He hooked it up. Oh my Which God. Which is so weird. Cause I'm like not a jewelry person. <laughs> so it's so weird for me to be wearing this like fancy ring with like, with like chucks and like Little bands, bits. like it's yeah. kind of crazy. You're like it's fake, just like my Fendi case. Yeah, <laughs> my, it's cubic zirconian for sure. Who knows? Um, no, it's not. How um, did you guys meet? Oh God, I hate saying this. We like messaged each other online. Oh, like yeah. DMs or like yeah, AOL like chat kind of messenger. D- yeah, D- <laughs> AOL chat. Thanks, because yeah. we're old. Um, he's like, "What'd you guys message each other on uh, hot Friendster? Mail? Yeah, Hotmail. Yeah, hot, hot AOL.com. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, we messaged each other online and. You know, we were both single and uh, he was in an eight year relationship and he'd been single for like a year and I was recently single for like a year and um, Which is a good time. Like a it's a good time, a long time. A, long time. Recent, yeah. a year, I definitely say if you're like going to get out of a relationship and get back in one, at least give yourself a year. Yeah, because you have to grow <laughs> yeah. so much You have to yourself. learn how to yeah. be by yourself, which I hated. I yeah. mean, like I hate being by myself as it is. Mm-hmm. Like I'm hate it. There's nothing I hate more. I think I I love it. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I'm so codependent. Really? Yeah. I like taking care of people. So like it's weird because like sweet. Yeah, I don't know. Well, that's nice. But you're by yourself right now, right? Yeah. yeah. And you like it? Yeah. yeah. Wow. I never asked you like what happened. I know you probably talked about it. We'll we'll talk about it off the podcast. Okay, we'll talk about it off the podcast. (laughs) Just kidding. Um, I'm all trying to get you juicy on your podcast. I'm all like, let's get the details. (laughs) I turn it around. It's my podcast now. Um. No, so we started messaging each other, and he was like, I love your videos. You're so funny. Like, when I was on Vine, I had all these, like, crazy people that followed me, like, um, you know. Uh, it's crazy because you, like, move yourself into this world of, like, where, like, A-list celebrities, oh, we're like, following watch me. Yeah, yeah. yeah, like, I had huge talent. Like, Sam Smith, like, tweeted at me, you know, the singer. He was like, yeah, I fucking course. love you. And, like, you know, um, I ended up, like, I don't, Is that even, weird? I don't even want to name drop, but so many people. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Is it weird? Cause like, yeah, I love I'm Sam like, Smith, uh, but he tweeted me. You're like an w- amazing artist. Why yeah. are you saying I'm great? Like, yeah. You're great. You know, yeah. I, a huge artist. Like, I'm not even gonna. I don't want to like sit here and brag. But not like, to like name names, but like Justin Bieber. Yeah, like not to name names, but yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it was like kind of <laughs> crazy, and all these people come up to me when I would be out in LA, and they'd be like, huge celebrities who I was in awe of, and they'd be like, oh my god, you're so funny, and I was like, like how did you react? So crazy. Because you I did some like, stuff with Bieber, yeah. Yeah. I was so I was so flattered and like are you I thought it was like a joke I was like are you playing a joke on me right because <laughs> that's hurting my feelings was it are. uh do you think those were genuine collaborations or was it more like because you were you were popping people were talking about you it was a I think marketing pe- move. I think people de- genuinely thought I was funny okay um and they were like liked me and wanted to work with me I do I mean I still have so many cool people that follow me like it's so crazy um and I met so many people because of Vine. I'm so grateful. I mean, I met my husband pretty much because right. of Vine, if yeah. you think about it, because he used to watch my videos and he was like, oh my God, I always thought you were so funny. And he's like, and now I like see you're really hot. <laughs> I'm like, well, I got hot and I got like some fillers and shit. And people are like, people think I have like plastic surgery, which I actually didn't get actual surgery. I just got right, like right. some fillers. I got some lip injections okay. and you know, a little under eye filler and maybe well, at least you're honest balance. about it. I feel oh like my a God, lot of I'm people... not going to lie about it. Like yeah. it's, I literally, and you know, I only did it because I had always been self-conscious about things like my own face. And mm-hmm. I would have like, I was like ready to get like actual surgery. And my, uh, the person that I went to was like, you don't need actual surgery. Like you can just do some things to balance out your face, you know? And I was like, Oh cool. So, you know, I was down. It was do you cool. think that that's okay to promote? Like, I don't like, like the like, Kardashian look or like, <laughs> You know, just like cosmetic surgery at all. I'm not like saying I'm going to go out there and be like, everyone should get plastic surgery. It's great. You know, but I think if you're going to do something that makes you feel better about Mm -hmm. yourself, then do it. Like if, you know, I mean, there's obviously a line that you cross. Like there's a line of when people have had so much shit done and now they're just like, like I don't like my underarms. I want those fixed. You know, like you start to go crazy. Obviously it can get really, it can be addictive. It can be so addictive and really unhealthy. But I think like if you learn to balance like what it is, I know a lot of people are getting veneers. I know I I was thinking about getting on. Wow. Your teeth are perfect. Thanks. See, exactly. So I'm like, 
my like my husband has beautiful veneers and so i'm like fuck i want like those kind of teeth you know like uh, but they're just always perfect just light up a room yeah. I, want, I want my teeth to enter the room before i do they don't stain <laughs> at all they're just always no, perfectly they, like, white are so sh- and they're straight like i yeah. have to wear a retainer on my bottom and my teeth are like Wah. like my I teeth try my, to do like my, the wu-tang symbol i have a retainer yeah. that's like built in yeah like i i used to have one too and so i was like fuck i just want to get veneers but you know whatever it's all good but don't you have to like saw down your Dude, teeth they saw down your teeth to little <laughs> spikes and you're like you look like a fucking psycho. Have gremlin. you seen him without the veneers? Yeah, it's scary. One time, one of his broke off, and I was like, "What the <laughs> fuck?" Like they had like little possum teeth. Like <laughs> he's very oh scary. God. They're like sharp, like little fucking gremlin teeth. I couldn't imagine, dude. It's scary. It's like if someone without all their veneers on, it's very scary. It's like a. Oh, it's fucking it's scary. Like it a, looks like possum teeth. Like yeah. what's that game where you have to like push the teeth down? Oh, you mean the the sh- or the alligator one? Like as a kid? Oh yeah, that game. I forget the name of it. Yeah, but it's like them spaced out. Right? Yeah, like, it's scary, sharp little <laughs> fucking scary teeth. Yeah. Oh my god. So um yeah maybe I'll get them maybe I won't probably not. No I don't. They're think They're like really to. expensive. They're like a thousand dollars a tooth. Yeah, it's like fifteen. I'm like, what are these veneers grand? made out of? Like Beyonce's fucking <laughs> flesh? Like what is this? Like what are these made out of? Um, but yeah, no, uh, I think as long as you don't get unhealthy with plastic surgery, I think it can really help people with their confidence and things like that. And everyone's like, oh, you should be confident no matter what. Right, right. Like, you should love yourself no matter what. Well, fuck it. Like some of us don't, you know, sorry. Like I have known girls that have had like a big hump in their nose just cause like whatever they broke it mm-hmm. or it's genetic and then they got it filed down and right. they look amazing and they feel so much better about themselves. And Hey, if you got to do that, you got to do that. Or if it makes you feel better then great, you know, yeah, I guess it's all about perspective. It's all about perspective. Yeah. I would never, I never judge anyone. I mean, obviously like when you take it too far, it's kind of like, Ugh, you know, like the butt fucking yeah, crazy yeah. injections where your butt just looks bananas <laughs> and you're like, Whoa dude. Like, but cause whatever. it sets like a false expectation of reality. Yeah, like I you mean, if you're going to do that shit, I think it like at least just admit you're doing it so that people don't go out here being like, oh, why isn't my butt look like that? Mm-hmm. It's like, dude, because you don't have like 400 pounds of silicone in your butt, you know? Like, <laughs> yeah. So I try to always be open. I like film my shit when I'm there and people are like, oh, she's getting it for free. And I don't even half the time get it for free. Mm-hmm. I usually just do it because I just want people, people to know, know yeah. that like I'm not trying to be some like. Fake you know, ass bitch. Fake ass bitch who's like, I'm just naturally beautiful. I don't know. I don't know why. I just wake up so good looking. My yeah. skin's perfect. My skin's perfect. My teeth are perfect. Everything's perfect. It's so hard. Um, yeah. So I try to just be real, always as possible. And I get like hate for it for sure. Mm-hmm. You know, people are like, saying you're oh, fake. Oh, no, you're fake. Yeah. yeah, cool. It's like you're, f- you're fake, but you're being real about being, uh, being fake. fake. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So am I really fake? Yeah. Or- <laughs> Um, anyway. But I want to talk. What was it like filming a documentary? Because I've like everybody I've had on the show has either done you know TV, yeah. film. Yeah. I've never had someone on the show that's done a documentary because that's you know, real. It was really cool actually because I'm not like a person who would have been. I, I I don't know. I think I got. It takes a while. Like they basically come to your house with a camera like as soon as you wake up. Is that weird? So weird because I'm like really self-conscious. You're like, hey, I gotta do my morning shit real quick. Dude, I was like, yeah, you guys just chill here You're for like a minute. You're like mic'd yeah, up? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like, <laughs> they're all like, whoa. Uh. Yeah, that's in like the special parts. Like <laughs> the, the, the unreleased uh, yeah. documentary. Um, But yeah, no, I I definitely was very like taken aback by it at first because they showed up so early. I was, I would like, I would sleep till like 2 p.m. They would show up at like 10 a.m. like ready to roll. And I was like, dude, I don't even start my day. So they would kind of just film me like meandering around my house trying to figure out what I'm doing with my life. And But it did was you crazy. feel like you had to perform like, oh, I'm such a busy girl? No, like- no. And I told them that I was like, I don't really have that much going on right now, yeah, to be yeah. honest. Like I had like a couple auditions and things like that. And then they tried to film me at my auditions and then the casting people wouldn't let them. So, you know, there was even stuff like that cut out of it. But um but yeah, no, I like I they just film me in my natural element and I didn't try to like make it look like I have a cool life. Like I didn't right. go clubbing. I didn't like do anything. I just lived, lived like my them. life. And I think you see that in it. You know what I mean? I did spent they, a lot of time by myself. Did you have to like watch it before it was released? Or the no. First, so they could have manipulated the edit. I didn't if they get to. it to watch it. But like I definitely t- t- knew that I didn't do anything or say anything that wasn't true or real. To who I was mm-hmm. in my life So I wasn't even worried I was like no matter how they cut it It's who I am and what I am So Was there any part that you didn't like? Um I think I The only thing that that um I wish I didn't say Was like 
the part about my childhood where my pa- I had like a really bad childhood and mm-hmm. my, my mom and dad fought a lot and I talked about the part where like my mom like chased my dad around our kitchen table with a knife and was like oh, trying yeah. to stab him and I like talked about that on the documentary and my mom and I had like finally been kind of healing our relationship mm. after years, years of like you know tumultuousness and then she watched it and saw that and flipped out and was like oh like you don't know your father was cheating on me yeah, and that's yeah. why I did it and all this shit and she's been like so it kind of like threw our relationship back down the drain. Do you? F- but I, I mean, always have a hard time to. But it happens, so it's not like I'm like. You yeah, know, but do you have a hard whatever. time like opening up about like super personal stuff that in like incriminates almost other people? I mean, like if it happened, like, like I, I I hate talking about like when someone asks me about like my parents or yeah. like how I was raised and stuff. Yeah. I have no complaints, but like I also don't feel like I feel bad saying like you know me and my dad got in an argument because I feel like like he's not here to defend himself you know right what I'm saying? I mean <laughs> I definitely like I didn't really like feel I don't feel bad about saying it because it happened and like she put me through a lot when mm-hmm. I was a kid and still now is putting me through a lot and so I don't feel bad about saying it but I do just wish I just had not even said it because it just caused so much more like drama you know and I was trying to patch my relationship up with right. her and it's just not probably never going to be patched up and that's just the way it is. So, you know, would you, how does Tommy treat your career? Because I know in like the social media career, you're a lot more open mm-hmm. and Tommy's from Motley Crue, like a list celebrity, like unattainable. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like we have, we all have these, I know it's so funny. Um, it's very different. Like his life is like so much more, yeah, I guess, different. personal. Yeah. 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 How and does I'm he feel so about in-person. your, yeah. Your openness. <sighs> I mean, it's like a double-edged sword. Like sometimes he like it. Sometimes he loves it, and he's really impressed by how I know how to do all this stuff. Like he'll be like, "Hey, babe, can you help me? You know, attach a link, or can you help me like <laughs> dead?" <laughs> he's, like I mean, to like a to like a uh, yeah. Instagram. Thing, well, I you know? saw he was he's he he's posted you. Yeah. His yeah, like he's very open with. Oh yeah, like, yeah. No, he loves me very much, and I love him very much. I, um, I think he's learning to learn how they're just from a different generation right like they social media, don't my care parents about, don't even understand right 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 media. like he doesn't really care about social media it's more for like you know work mm-hmm. you know with his album and that's coming out he has an album coming out and then the dirt coming out he had to like learn how to do a lot of stuff yeah and, you know because they'd be like he needs to post this trailer at this time and he's like yeah. how do i post a trailer you know because like, he just wants to drum out like yeah, i just want to play drums yeah. yeah so i had to like show him how to do all this stuff so that kind of thing i had to teach him how to do um but no, I mean, like, does yeah. he hate it or does he think he it's cool? He doesn't really like social media. Okay. It's, that's the only thing that we definitely are different with. Like, he thinks it's just so fucking stupid and vapid, and in a way, it is. But um, I also think it brings a lot of awareness to different things, and mm-hmm. it can be really positive, it can be really negative. Yeah, yeah. But that's anything in life, uh-huh. you know. There's a good and a bad side to everything. I think that he he misses like the 80s when there was no social media and you could go out and do whatever the fuck you wanted and didn't have to worry about someone yeah, like yeah. recording you or taking a picture or fucking saying you know what I mean yeah, yeah. so I think that he misses that but I think he's like growing and you know like we all are right. and trying to adapt to it but he definitely like doesn't like that I'm on my phone like doing videos and stuff like that you know he hates that but he also doesn't understand that like that's how I make my money. Yeah, That's yeah. how I live. You know, I, I have a social presence. Right, and so right. it's kind of hard for me. Do you think at any point he'll get on? Cause I know Will Smith's getting on a lot of a list, like on what actual celebrities, like Will Smith's vlogging. You got oh, Zach Efron. Wow. Yeah. No, I heard Zach Efron has a YouTube yeah. channel. I've no, seen a few you others. know what's so crazy is like a bunch of big companies came to us and were like, you know, we want Tommy to do either like, cause Tommy loves to cook and he's such a good cook. Mm-hmm. And I've told him so many times, I'm like, you should do a cooking, cooking show. show yeah. Cause he's so like, he's like a chef. Good. He makes crazy shit. And he just doesn't want, he just doesn't want to do it. Yeah. He's like, I just don't want to, I don't, he doesn't like attention. Believe doesn't it or not. Have to do it. Yeah. He doesn't have to do it. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So he's had a lot of offers to do stuff and he just hasn't like wanted to do it. So That's good. I he's, mean, he's just, chill. he's just, he's just Yeah. Chill. I met him this weekend at Coachella. Yeah, Super he's dope chill. dude. Yeah. I thought it was really cool. He like came up to me. He's like, bro, thank you for buying me a drink. I'm like, wow. Yeah. He's really Thanks sweet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. He's so sweet. Yeah. And so like, He's just like really laid back and I just think that, you know, 
we just are in two we come from two different worlds but we but we make it work you know right, what I mean right. we kind of like meet in the middle mm -hmm. and he like and he enjoys like when I make my videos and stuff like that he thinks it's funny that's awesome he wants me to he's always encouraging me to like do more comedy videos because he loves when I do that mm -hmm. he's like that's what you know I used to watch all your comedy yeah, videos yeah. and he used to make me laugh so he's really sweet like that well that's really awesome I'm really happy for you you seem Thanks. a lot happier I am so happy that's I know awesome. we're such a weird couple huh like, no so you guys funny. are awesome you guys I think yeah. you guys mix really really well we do. He's my and best friend. I had never met him before, but yeah, like I said this weekend, he's a really dope guy. Doesn't he seem like he's like 17? And he's so chill. He's I met so him and his chill. son have a good relationship. I know, like, they do now. So know. guys, uh, that's all the time we have, no. unfortunately. Um, you guys could check out Brittany's channel. I'll link everything down below. Yeah. And then when are you going to start uh, releasing your podcast? They're out. Worst oh, they're first. Out. There's three episodes out already. Okay, yeah. worst first. I'm going to be on there eventually. And you yeah, guys will soon. hear my worst first dates tune in Ooh. we'll see you guys next week on living large Live, deuces living medium <laughs> <laughs>